deep in the jungle, a tourist named Sarah found herself injured, alone, and vulnerable. Suddenly, a massive gorilla emerged and performed an act that astonished the entire village. Sarah Jenkins had always been captivated by the wild beauty and tranquility of the forest. However, as an urban resident, she had never truly been cut off and fully absorbed by her environment until now. If she was honest with herself, she missed her reliable GPS more than she had anticipated. The poor cell reception meant she had to rely on a compass, which she had only learned to use a few days prior, leading to her inevitable disorientation. Despite being undoubtedly lost, the enchanting sounds of birds and the thickening fog compelled her to press on. She should have halted her journey sooner, but the landscape's allure made it impossible for her to turn back several miles from where she started. Along the way, she encountered villagers coming from a nearby stream. After exchanging greetings, she mentally noted the stream as a landmark for her way back. However, she now realized she might not be able to relocate it. Venturing deeper into the jungle, Sarah's fatigue grew. She was convinced she had been walking in circles for some time and was searching for strength when she paused to drink some water. Suddenly, a menacing growl nearby froze her in terror. Her eyes widened as she strained to listen, her instincts on high alert due to the potential threat. As she listened, she realized the growl sounded pained, evoking sympathy rather than fear. At a crossroads, Sarah was torn between the primal instinct to flee for her own safety and the knowledge that something in the forest needed her help. Her adventurous spirit, unshaken by uncertainty, suggested that this might be the moment she had been seeking an opportunity to make a difference in the wild world she had entered. As the roars grew louder, Sarah stood and moved towards the source of the unsettling noises. Bracing for what was to come, she emerged from the shadows and saw the source of the distressing sounds, a fully grown male gorilla caught in a cruel net struggling to free itself. The gravity of the situation struck Sarah with shock. Her eyes were fixed on the magnificent creature desperately in need of assistance. A captured gorilla, a majestic being of the wild now at her mercy. She faced a tough decision to aid the majestic beast in escaping or to turn away and avoid the potential dangers hidden in the malevolent shadows, including the presence of poachers who had set the trap. To approach Sarah understood that the gorilla was not only a victim of the harsh realities inflicted by humans, but also a formidable wild animal. As Sarah pondered her next move, the gorilla issued a unique roar, a sound that transcended the boundaries of the animal kingdom, sounding like a desperate plea for assistance that resonated throughout the jungle depths. Sarah's heart ached as she edged closer and accidentally stepped on a twig that snapped loudly beneath her feet. The noise reverberated through the jungle, causing the gorilla to swiftly turn towards the sound and lock eyes with Sarah. Paralyzed, Sarah stood still. The gorilla's expression was a mix of fury and desperation, and it seemed to Sarah that her decision to come closer might have been a grave mistake. However, the gorilla then emitted another growl, and a glimmer of softness appeared in its eyes, revealing a moment of mutual vulnerability. In that exchange, Sarah silently acknowledged the gorilla's unspoken plea for liberation from its painful entrapment. Caught in a bind, Sarah witnessed the glint of metal and realized the gorilla's aggression stemmed from its attempt to assert dominance despite its confinement. Sarah, undeterred, spoke a few calming words in a gentle tone and made soothing gestures to communicate her peaceful intentions and her desire to free the gorilla. Remaining cautious, the gorilla gradually relaxed as Sarah moved closer knelt down and began to carefully cut away the net that ensnared the magnificent animal. Each of Sarah's movements was a deliberate and cautious step towards earning the trust of a creature governed by survival instinct. As Sarah methodically severed the binding threads, the tension dissipated into a heavy silence until the restraints finally gave way, liberating the gorilla with a surge of primal energy. The male silverback, named Jack, began to pace aggressively sending a chill down Sarah's spine as she realized the potential danger of his display. He was asserting his dominance, proving that despite her help, he was fully capable of defending himself if necessary. Sarah flinched, considering how she could appear as non-threatening as possible. She recalled that direct eye contact could be perceived as a challenge by dominant male silverback, so she averted her gaze, 
respectfully acknowledging the peril inherent in the situation. The gorilla's frustration was evident in its powerful displays. Standing on its hind legs, it beat its chest with formidable fist. The jungle reverberated with the primal force as the magnificent creature burst forth. Finally free, the atmosphere then shifted. The gorilla calmed and settled down on the jungle floor, emitting a tranquil sound, a gesture that seemed to implore Sarah not to come any closer. Though initially bewildered, Sarah observed as the gorilla extended its arms in a gesture that seemed to invite her closer for a better look. Gathering her bravery, Sarah moved forward cautiously. It was then that she noticed an item on her right wrist. It appeared to be a bracelet, and the gorilla was attempting to draw her attention to it. Moving slightly nearer, Sarah could make out a single name inscribed on it. Jabbuari, the gorilla, acknowledged with a nod confirming the name. Sarah was taken aback, wondering who would give a wild gorilla a bracelet named Jabari. Suddenly, it dawned on her that Jabari might have been part of a wildlife sanctuary and had been named there before being released back into the wilderness. Reaching into her bag, Sarah pulled out a bunch of bananas she had gathered during her travels. She offered them to Jabari, who eagerly devoured the fruit, establishing a moment of connection between them. After casting one final look around the clearing, Jabari stood and disappeared into the dense jungle foliage. With a reflective heart, Sarah took a moment to sit and ponder this extraordinary encounter. She had ventured into the wild and experienced a direct interaction with a creature she had previously only seen on television in a wholly unexpected manner. Gazing at a shredded net, a palpable reminder of her role in this newfound narrative and overwhelmed by the surreal experience, Sarah decided it was time to head back to her apartment in the nearby village. She resolved to navigate her way back somehow and possibly encounter other villagers along the way. However, as she contemplated her next steps, a sudden realization struck her. It was unlikely she would meet villagers. Instead, the poachers who had set the trap might be alerted by Jabari's distant calls and could already be on their way. In a rush of urgency, Sarah stood up, her bag ready by her side. As she took her first step, her worst fears began to materialize. A distant rustling in the jungle hinted at approaching danger. Sarah, caught off guard by her adventures, braced herself for the challenges ahead. The sound of approaching footsteps grew louder, revealing the presence of menacing men, intent on checking their trap. The poachers who had set a net to capture Jabari were now closing in, in a decisive moment, imposing figures emerged from the shadows, their threatening postures, and the sun glinting off their weapons. Their piercing gazes fixed on Sarah, surprise evident on their faces, as they wondered about her solitary presence in the wild. Approaching the net, one of the poachers discovered that their trap had indeed ensnared something significant when their eyes met with Sarah's. As Sarah gazed around, it became clear to her that she had forcefully freed their captive animal. One of the poachers confronted her, demanding to know if she was responsible for releasing the creature they had ensnared. While one man was less aggressive and doubted her involvement due to her being a woman suggesting that it was unlikely she had freed the wild animal, he reasoned that the strange noises earlier in the jungle hinted at a perilous situation she would not have survived had she been the one to liberate the creature. Nonetheless, the leader of the poachers dismissed such notions pointing to the knife attached to Sarah's belt. With no visible injuries on her and only her tracks as evidence of her presence, it was clear to them she had meddled with their trap. This revelation escalated their fury as they found undeniable tracks nearby, which they saw as proof of Sarah's involvement in the animal's release. Attempting to mask her fear, Sarah remained still, tears welling up in her eyes, then streaming down her face despite her efforts to hold them back. Without any compassion, the men bound her hands and placed her in the trunk of a car, eliminating any chance of escape. Tension mounted as the poachers got ready to transport Sarah in the confined space of the car to their camp. Meanwhile, the animal Sarah had helped, rescued previously by an environmental organization, and released back into the wild after months of care, recognized its surroundings and attacked the poachers' camp in search of its kin wreaking havoc. Realizing the relentless pursuit of the poachers for the creature, Sarah understood the magnitude of her predicament. 
she had become inadvertently entangled with those exploiting the intelligence and familial bonds of the very being she aimed to safeguard. Intent on escaping, Sarah devised a plan. Concealed in her pocket was a penknife, her means of survival. With her hands tied behind her, she skillfully extracted the knife without drawing attention, especially as the poachers navigated a sharp turn. Seizing the moment, Sarah quietly cut through her restraints, timing her escape perfectly. As the net was cut and the gorilla was freed, Sarah watched as the male silverback gorilla began to assert his dominance. A chill ran down her spine as she realized the potential danger. Even though she had saved him, he was fully capable of confronting her. Sarah recoiled as she recalled that direct gaze into a male silverback's eyes could be interpreted as a challenge by the alpha of the group. Consequently, she bowed her head, avoiding eye contact with the gorilla, quietly cognizant of the peril before her. The gorilla's agitation was evident as it stood on its hind legs and thumped its chest with powerful fists, resonating a deep, primal force throughout the jungle. The majestic creature then cautiously averted her gaze and maintained a respectful distance, signaling with a soft grunt, a gesture that seemed to reassure Sarah not to be alarmed. Intrigued, Sarah observed as the gorilla extended its front paws invitingly, urging her to draw nearer and observe. Summoning her bravery, Sarah moved closer and then noticed a bracelet around the gorilla's right wrist. It was trying to show her something. Drawing closer still, she deciphered the inscription on the bracelet. Javari, the gorilla, acknowledged with a nod. Shocked, Sarah wondered who would have given a wild gorilla a named bracelet, possibly from an animal welfare center, that had named him before releasing him back into the wild. Regaining her senses, Sarah discarded her pocket knife, leapt from the moving vehicle, and dashed off. The poachers, caught off guard by her daring move, chased her down the slope. With adrenaline surging through her, Sarah sprinted as fast as she could. However, she tumbled down the slope, her vision blurring until she eventually lost consciousness. Meanwhile, the leader of the poachers evaluated the situation and ordered his men to retreat, perhaps realizing the difficulties posed by the terrain and the severity of the jungle's challenges, convinced that Sarah could not survive on her own in the wilderness. This unexpected reprieve lingered, as Sarah lay unconscious at the base of the hill, her fate hanging in the balance, torn between the threat of poachers and the harsh embrace of nature. In the village, time passed excruciatingly slowly for the guide assigned to Sarah. His impatience was visible in the creases of his face. As hours turned into more hours with no sign of the tourist, his worry prompted him to act. He approached the village chief and reported her mysterious disappearance. The news spread rapidly through the village, stirring concern among the locals. Realizing the gravity of the situation, the village chief swiftly organized a search party to find the missing woman. Regaining her consciousness, Sarah found herself amidst a new and uncertain ordeal, surrounded by the dense and untamed wilderness. After regaining consciousness in the wilderness, Sarah found herself beside a rock that had halted her rapid descent down the slope. Disoriented and weak, she could barely move, realizing she had suffered a severe leg injury and was bleeding heavily. Summoning all her strength, she managed to sit up against a sturdy rock and assess her predicament. She was thankful to have escaped from the poacher's clutches. Reaching into her bag, she was relieved to find she still had some water and a few snacks. Starving, she quickly consumed the food and drank the water which modestly revitalized her strength. Using a napkin from her bag, she fashioned a makeshift bandage around her leg to stem the bleeding. Though the bleeding had ceased in a desperate bid for rescue, Sarah tried to use her damaged phone only to find it inoperative. Confronted with the stark reality of being isolated and unsupported, she resolved to return to the village. However, her injured leg was a significant hindrance, causing excruciating pain whenever she attempted to stand. As Sarah considered her limited options, she heard rustling in the bushes, heightening her anxiety. The fear of a wild predator lured by the scent of blood, or possibly the same group of men she had narrowly escaped from, overwhelmed her. Feeling weak, exhausted, and vulnerable, she braced for the worst as the rustling and faint growls drew closer. 
With trepidation, she closed her eyes, anticipating a dreadful encounter with a predator. Suddenly, she felt a touch on her shoulder and flinched. Cautiously opening her eyes, she was astonished to see the Jabari gorilla she had earlier freed from a poacher's trap now standing before her as an unexpected and astonishing ally. Unsure of Jabari's intentions, Sarah recalled hearing from the poachers that he was a trained gorilla who had spent time in a rehabilitation center and learned to communicate with humans. Prompted by her situation, she used gestures to convey her injuries and her need to get home. To her surprise, Jabari seemed to understand and responded in kind with gestures. Filled with new hope, Sarah realized that Jabari was prepared to assist her. He carefully lifted her up and began to navigate through the jungle. As hours passed and night fell, they made their way toward the village. Sarah recognized a stream she had seen earlier in the day, indicating they were nearing the village. However, their progress was suddenly interrupted by the glare of torchlights piercing the darkness. Sensing a potential threat, Jabari gently set Sarah down and began to display aggressive behavior, beating his chest and pacing furiously as the tension escalated. A guide leading a search party soon made their presence known, and Sarah recognized that the torches they carried were from a rescue team dispatched by the village chief. Viewing the team as potential threats due to past incidents with poachers, the Jabwari gorilla aggressively approached them. Concerned that tensions might escalate, Sarah implored the team to withdraw, promising to soothe the Jabari. Once the team had backed off to a secure distance, Sarah used sign language to reassure the gorilla, explaining that the group was there to assist. Understanding her, the Jabari gently placed his palm against hers in a quiet goodbye before vanishing into the forest. Bewildered by the profound connection between human and gorilla, Kako, and the search team proceeded with caution. They escorted Sarah back to the village where she received local medical attention for her wounded leg. Within two weeks, Sarah had healed remarkably well and was able to move around without difficulty. Out of curiosity, the people of Gude Village eagerly awaited Sarah's first-hand narrative of her incredible adventure. Already, rumors and speculation had spun tales of her newfound friendship with the gorilla and the villagers were keen to learn the truth directly from her. Once fully recovered, Sarah recounted her thrilling experience to the village chief and Coco, her guide. She described her encounter with the gorilla and the lethal danger posed by poachers. The villagers were astounded by her tale, finding it hard to believe that a city girl could collaborate with a wild gorilla deep in the jungle. As her story unfolded, it became shockingly clear that the poachers posed a risk not only to the wildlife but also to the villagers themselves. Recognizing the immediacy of the threat, the village leader acted swiftly. He alerted the authorities, providing them with crucial information regarding the poacher's hideout. Thanks to Sarah's details about the location from which she had escaped, law enforcement quickly moved to the specified area and apprehended the poachers. Sarah inadvertently became a tool of justice, helping to halt poaching activities in the region. As her departure from the village drew near, Sarah felt a mix of emotions. She was saddened to leave the tranquility of the village, the friendly faces, and the warm-hearted locals who had welcomed her. But above all, she reflected on the impact of her daring spirit and the role she played in safeguarding the wildlife from poachers. As she prepared to leave, her thoughts remained with the Jabari gorilla, who had become a central figure in her journey. On her remarkable journey, she realized that with the menace of poachers eliminated, the Jabari could now experience a safer, improved existence within the jungle, which had previously been overshadowed by peril. She felt a wave of relief at the thought of the Jabari flourishing in the dense, pristine wilderness free from the constant threat posed by those who aimed to take advantage of the animal's intelligence and familial bonds. What a splendid conclusion! How would you react if you encountered a wild gorilla in the jungle? Would you possess the bravery to evade poachers like Sarah did? Share your thoughts in the comments below, and then there is an another similar warm story. Let's continue. When a massive, irate gorilla named Bobo suddenly became hostile and barred anyone from approaching him, the staff at the Mafu Primate Sanctuary were filled with concern, 
their alarm turned to surprise and bewilderment when they closely inspected his hand, Bobo, a long-time resident of the sanctuary, had been living there since he was two years old, having faced numerous adversities from a young age, originally born in the wild. He experienced a normal upbringing by his mother until a devastating incident occurred, poachers tragically captured his mother, leaving a young Bobo orphaned and incapable of surviving on his own or handling the responsibilities his mother once managed. He was fortunately rescued by compassionate sanctuary workers who brought him to a safe haven where other young gorillas with similar traumatic experiences resided. As years passed, Bobo evolved into a formidable figure. Eventually assuming the role of the alpha male within his group, his physical growth was impressive, he developed into a strong, muscular gorilla, towering over his peers, his imposing size alone was enough to deter any poacher from considering a confrontation. Bobo was highly regarded at the South African Sanctuary, where he was just as beloved as each member of the extended sanctuary family, encompassing over 300 rescued apes and monkeys. The sanctuary dedicated itself to providing refuge and rehabilitation for animals affected by poaching or those in need due to injuries, a woman named Alyssa played a pivotal role in Bobo's upbringing and his evolution into a robust and sagacious gorilla, having spent substantial time with him. Alyssa had an intimate understanding of Bobo's moods and behaviors, allowing her to detect his feelings, whether he was content and relaxed or frustrated and tense. Her unique ability to communicate with him effectively made her one of the few people who could connect with Bobo on a deep level, their relationship was profoundly special, resembling a mother-son bond, and this connection remained strong even as Bobo grew to become much larger than Alyssa, their mutual affection and respect for each other were evident. Despite weighing 300 pounds and having a formidable presence that might suggest a fierce disposition, Bobo was remarkably gentle. He knew how to assert his dominance when necessary among the gorilla group, yet he typically showed a surprisingly tender side, this gentleness extended not only to other apes at the sanctuary but also to certain staff members, observing such a large animal exhibit such softness was always a heartwarming sight, Bobo's capacity for gentleness, despite his size and strength made him an endearing figure to both the apes and the humans at the sanctuary, however. This peaceful status quo was challenged at times when other male gorillas attempted to challenge his authority, Bobo's role as the alpha male was marked by his assertive and commanding demeanor, for example, when two younger males, Kibu and McCain, dared to challenge Bobo's leadership, it inevitably led to a confrontation, despite the efforts of Alyssa and the animal keepers who stepped in to defuse the situation. The conflict highlighted Bobo's dominance. As he successfully retained his position at the top of the hierarchy, leaving the young challenger subdued, over time, Alyssa started noticing a shift in Bobo's typical behavior, normally, he was quite active within his enclosure, often interacting with various enrichment tools designed to stimulate his physical and mental faculties, however. He began exhibiting a noticeable change by retreating into the tall grass, distancing himself from his usual engagements. This unusual withdrawal caught the attention of both the staff and the other apes who were used to his active participation, it appeared that Bobo was preoccupied, preferring solitude over his routine activities, a development that raised concerns for Alyssa, driven by a need to understand this change, Alyssa kept a watchful eye on Bobo, she discovered that his use of the long grass was not merely for isolation, he was seemingly hiding something there. Knowing that gorillas are not only physically robust but also emotionally complex creatures often keeping their own secrets, she knew uncovering Bobo's activities wouldn't be straightforward without potentially provoking him, Alyssa crafted a strategy to safely investigate, during feeding time, she lured Bobo into his cage with food and securely locked him inside once he began eating, with Bobo occupied. Alyssa cautiously explored his favorite spot in the tall grass, to her relief. She found no dangerous objects, only signs of Bobo having been there, like patches of flattened grass, it was clear to Alyssa that Bobo had been misleading her about the location of whatever he was hiding, with renewed determination, Alyssa focused on discovering what Bobo held so closely, however, each attempt to get closer to see the mysterious object was met with hostility, Bobo would become visibly agitated, quickly moving away to a more secluded area. Keeping a wary distance from anyone who showed interest in his secret, this protective behavior around his hidden item made it clear that no one could safely challenge Bobo without risking his wrath, keeping his secret safe with him, 
Bobo the gorilla had always been recognized by his caretakers for his potential for aggression and violence, his behavior even set off alarm bells among his fellow gorillas, who were intrigued by his secretive demeanor, whenever they approached. Bobo would react fiercely, screaming and chasing them away, guarding his mystery zealously, it seemed no one could unravel the enigma surrounding Bobo, but Alyssa, who had nurtured a slightly better relationship with him over time, finally managed to bridge the gap after persistent efforts, what Alyssa discovered left her utterly amazed and without words. It wasn't an object or a delicious treat that Bobo was zealously protecting, it was something far more extraordinary, cradled in Bobo's large. Gentle hands was a tiny animal, at first glance, Alyssa mistook it for a common rodent such as a mouse or a rat, however, a closer inspection with binoculars revealed it to be a galago, or, bush baby, a type of primate seldom seen in their care facility, this small creature had likely wandered into Bobo's enclosure from the nearby forest, remarkably, Bobo had adopted it, caring for it with a tenderness that belied his formidable size, he was seen tenderly touching and stroking the little galago, and even engaging in playful interactions with it, despite the stark size disparity, the tiny galago appeared wholly at ease under the protection of the massive gorilla, who had become its unexpected guardian, the galago occasionally explored the enclosure, navigating through the tall grass or darting about, yet it always returned to Bobo, showing a profound bond with the gorilla. Galagos are known for their nocturnal activities, adept at navigating in the dark. Leading Alyssa to speculate that the little primate might venture out at night, to her further astonishment, she observed that Bobo was not only sharing his food but was also actively feeding the small primate, the other gorillas at the sanctuary, as well as Alyssa and the rest of the team, were taken aback by this unusual friendship, despite his intimidating size. Bobo made sure to maintain a safe distance between his tiny charge and the other gorillas. It seemed the kindness and affection Alyssa had shown him during his upbringing were now being extended to his unique and diminutive companion, now, I turn to you, what do you think about this extraordinary tale, have you ever come across stories of large animals forming such unlikely friendships with much smaller ones, we love to hear from you, so please share your thoughts and experiences in the comments section below. That's all about our today's stories. Don't forget to like and subscribe our channel, see you next time.